would take it to Fritz Stadium. And Lee Davis with the opening kickoff. And nothing would happen in the second quarter. Lee Davis with a punt. Can't get it off. And the Hermits passes pull off a great special teams effort. Looks like a busted play, but Anthony Dabney will take it 13 yards, 7 0. Hermitage. After missing in a field goal early in the first quarter, Lee Davis Matthews makes this one work from 32 yards out, 7 3 at the half. In the second half, it was the Anthony Dabney show. Again, uh, design play will take this one 13 yards out as he scampers in and makes it 14 points for the big Hermitage Panthers. Again, from 10 yards out, Anthony Dabney puts him up 20. Did it get close on this one? Brandon Jones would pick it up and make it 20 to 19. Now, watch the extra point. The snap is bobbled. They're going for the two point conversion. He throws in a heavy coverage, and the Panthers pull off the upset 20 to 19. What a debut for Coach Kane. Last time these two teams met was in 1965. They owned them then, they owned them again. Let's take you down to the second quarter. Daryl Jones starts the route with that early three yard run. Then it's Tim Jean Pierre from 26 yards out, all in the second quarter, and the route continues. The cadets are stunned. The state champions don't know what to do. Check this out Patrick Dosh, leading passer in the league, nowhere to go, and Micah Green for the sack. Next series. Anthony Dabney looking great. Cafontel Mines from 26 yards out. Outstanding effort. Minutes left to go in the half. 27 to nothing on this five yard pass. Again, the Fontel Mines. The cadets are stunned. Coming out into the fourth quarter, the cadets could only muster 56 total yards as Vernon Hamilton gets nailed behind the line of scrimmage. Fourth quarter action, and Tim Jean Pierre will blast 75 yards down the right sideline. Outstanding effort for the man who put up whoop, 132 yards and 14 carries. And Michael Santos will top it off 41 to nothing on this nice 10 yard run. 41 to nothing. Outstanding effort by the Panthers. We came out here, we, we executed well and kept our men in focus. And we will come out with a big W. Well, we know Benning's a very strong team. They have a couple of Division I prospects, both on offense and defense. Um, we wanted to play a physical football game, which I thought we did. Um, we've been working hard in the weight room during the offseason and during the season. We live twice a week, and that's been a, a big plus. The Godwin Eagles are going to right their ship. They're going to make a yeoman's effort doing so, and number 33 is their man. That man, Chester Fritz, has been the man from the get-go when Hermitage opened up 50 years ago, there for the, some of the Corey coin toss. One of his linemen right there, Ron Axel. Chester Fritz amongst the best in the region. Time for that. Mitch Panthers to do what they've been doing for two weeks straight. They're going to have to do it against Godwin. The things didn't work out. Godwin's defense was all over the passing lanes and the running lanes, and Anthony Dabby nowhere to go, and special teams can't be doing that kind of stuff. Two to nothing in the quiet storm. Voices his opinion a little bit there. In the meantime, the ship set sail for the Godwin Eagles and the yeoman's effort of Johnny Juice making it happen. Hermitage trying to break down what Godwin was throwing down and he couldn't have said it any better. Once again, Johnny Juice creating the damage when the offensive line making these beautiful holes for this guy. 183 yards on 23 carries, of course, against Verona. These guys couldn't really score in the red zone, but things would be different. Johnny Juice head down. Makes it 9 to nothing, and of course, Patrick Kane trying to come up with something clever. Second quarter action. Folks, this game may have looked exciting, but it really wasn't. It was a regular doldrum, and of course, these kids just want to be on TV. But really, this game was, wasn't very exciting at all until the second half. And Fontel has his mind on football, and football on his mind. Anthony Dabney going back 35 yards. Fontel with a presence of mind to cross the football over the plane before Joe Barry knocks it out. Yes, sir. 9-7. We got a ball game. Godwin answers the call with a 66-yard drive, capped off by Johnny June's second TD of the night, and things are looking good. Now, the defense is catching on to Matt Bristow. Ooh, Jamal Coleman almost with the interception. He had six facing him. All right, Trey Blankenship with a punt. Tim Jean-Pierre, the hero versus Benedictine. No, Tim! And Godwin will recover at the three-yard line. Looks like an easy six, right? They give it to Johnny Junes. He gets stuck. 
The defensive secondary is ready for Matt Bristol. They swat it back. Great job by the defense and the defensive coach, Holly there. But Kim Jean-Pierre still had that muff pond in his mind. He was going nowhere. And Godwin got another safety. Junes kept grounding out the yardage and the clock. Bristol with the air attack to Chris Yancey. Five for 61 yards for the man. And Junes will collect his third TD on the night, making it 23 to 7. This one from 11 yards out with three minutes left. Hey, hey, take it easy, man. Put in the second string, coach. Hey, someone give that man an ice cold, cold Coke. Yeah, life is good. They're winning. They're going to win their first district game until this happens. Anthony Dabney looks for Fontel Mine. Six receptions, 133 yards, and that touchdown makes it 23 to 15. That's the two point conversion is good by Joe Jean Pierre. Then the onside kick. Do you believe, Panthers? Do you believe? Yes! <laughs> the Godwin Eagles are stunned. Two plays later, Fontel Mines again gets him even closer, down to the 39 yard line. The next play, Anthony Dabney will find Joe Jean Pierre, and yes! We've got a tie ball game, except we got a two point conversion. The place is in Vandalonium. The people that are in the parking lot, they're coming back in. They're showing their stuff. People are going nuts. Now, the two point conversion has sent the game into overtime. The loft, and yes, will you believe? Tied at 23, and the place is nuts. The Godwin Eagles now put their first string back in. And Johnny Jones in overtime will score his fourth TD. The extra point is good. Now, time for the Panthers to score. And they do. Joe Jean Pierre gets a touchdown, but a seemingly meaningless celebration of a hand jive. That one there calls for a foul. And Stottlemyre now has to go for a field goal. And it does sell just wide. And Godwin, with the help of some friends, win this one 30 to 29 and a thriller. And they win their first district game and get that monkey off their back. Celebrate it, boys. You earned it. For the last three minutes, we let them back in. Well, they they got back in it, and we didn't help ourselves any by not playing pass defense. Got we made a lot of mental errors, uh, and we we substituted a little too freely. Uh, and they just they got right back in it, and it takes a little bit of the sweet taste out of it for me. But it's uh, a win's a win, and we needed this. I said they fought a hard battle. They played a lot of character, played with a lot of heart. Uh, unfortunately, we came on the bad side of it. We'll test our manhood. Can you come back when it's when it's tough? It's easy to be it's easy to be top dog when you're two and zero. Now we're two and one. We'll find out what kind of real character we have. It's going to be exciting, doing what was done in the early '80s by Patrick Henry in the early new millennium here, and I'm excited to be a part of building something great again. Ed, does it feel funny you being here not being on Patrick Henry's side? Yes, but you have to live with it. You got to listen to those cheerleaders out there, fellas. Gilpin holds court on the field. Four receptions, 143 yards. That one from Anthony Martinez. Two plays later, Martinez himself. Now, again, to Gilpin, 9 of 20, 274 yards for Martinez. And this six-yarder makes it 6 to nothing. The passing lanes are clogged. What's Anthony going to do? Anthony Dabney going to take a run. All right, already. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds. He's out of bounds. Okay. Time left on the clock. Tim Jean-Pierre. Oh, can't collect. Stottlemyer with the field goal from 23 yards out. It's 6-3 to three at the half. Martinez looking for the bomb to Curley, and he's got this one. Nice move. But the defense will get there just in time. And it's time for the defense to do their goal line stand. The defense has really shown their stuff as of late. They stuff the Patriots on this next one. And check out this nice interception. Look alive, buddy. <laughs> Great defensive effort by the Panthers. We'll take you now to the fourth quarter, 6-3 to three Patriots and the Hermitage Panthers really doing a number on him. Except for there, it's time for the rally caps and those colors. That looks like a Godwin jacket, doesn't it? That looks like a Godwin jacket. Okay, back to the game. Tim Jean-Pierre, nowhere to go, 67 yards for him. 185 for the Panthers in total on 33 rushes. They can't force the touchdown, but they do force the interception. Gilpin, once again, a one-man wrecking crew. Fourth quarter again. On the 10 yard line, Anthony Dabney will take him right down to the five. That's all she'll go. Stottlemyre's field goal. Can you believe it? That wasn't any good. Then on the next play, Gilpin with a horror story. 80 yards on this touchdown return and makes it 13 to three. The Panthers just didn't have the magic on this one in late running. Daryl Jones, 102 yards rushing, and Dabney, three interceptions, hurt a little bit. Anthony Martinez, nine completions, 274 yards. 
Warriors trying to break a three-game losing streak. First series for the Warriors. Scott Jones makes it up from three yards up. They go up 7 to nothing. Check this out. Beautiful artwork. Panthers, the American flag. Gotta love it. Hey, at least they start off on their own 32, right? Next play, Henrico. Ronnie, man coming. Tyrell Jenkins with forces the fumble. Andy Bowman recovers it at the Warrior 8. We're there in business. Check it out. Daryl Jones will get eight of his 209 yards on this carry. One of his four TDs is a new stud. Welcome to Hallways at Hermitage. Okay, you want to see pretty? Check out Warriors Jr. Ronnie Alston. The arm. The perfect spin. Hard to believe this much talent on a 1-14. Hmm. Five plays later, Michael Smith charges in from 10. 13 to 7, Henrico. Whoa! All right. Now, this game was loaded with touchdowns and with penalties. Okay, that about says it all. Anthony Dabney, where's a hole? Where's a hole? Where's a hole? Where's a hole? There's a hole. Go, Anthony, go! Nice run. Mm, Division one, maybe. Daryl Jones simply makes his own hole, and Alan Pardue will make it 14 to 13 at the break. Now, third quarter action. Daryl will just simply blow it up from 28 yards and TD number three. All right now, time for a little special teams treat. Not only once, but twice, the Panthers special team blocks the punt, and uh, this will get any coach excited. Play run back. Okay, you got it. Stay right up with you. Got it. Stay right with us. Okay, fourth quarter. Do you believe this? Every bit of hurdler for Daryl Jones. This one you got to see in slow motion. 255 pounds a night train with the hurdle. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, all coaches be advised. The Mac Daddy makes it number four with a 28 to 13. 209 yards on 31 carries. It's all about you, Daryl. Now, there's a reason Chester Fritz Steel looks so nice. It's because they water it on a regular basis. Right, Coach Kane? <laughs> okay. Okay, Dabney will connect here. With Joe Jean Pierre and the cheerleaders go nuts. Final four, 35 13. You got your man, Larry, in the Panthers locker room. Big win tonight, baby. Big win tonight. Yeah. Everybody on the team's a star, but we got some of the big players, the primetime players tonight. Got my man, P.L. with the bottle of water at. What's up, dog? <laughs> Fontel Mines did his thing with a big interception. Had a tough first half, but you ended up winning, up, pulling the game out with a big win toward the end. What happened in the first quarter different from the second quarter? Um, I guess we just came out with more intensity or just did our jobs, I guess. Second quarter, our line stepped up. Our line, we did that thing. Our fullback was running hard. What the deal? Got the big man, the horse, front line. He got, he got all his. I talked to Night Train earlier. He told me he weighs about 390. But I want to know about the hurdle. Are you on the track team now, dog? I just knew it was gonna cut me. Look straight down. Just thought I'd jump over. So, did the defense keep you in the game early and then the offense took over, or was it just a balanced thing? Then, to a halftime, y'all just put it all together. Yeah, man, I give all the credit to the defense. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yes. They kept the offense on the, on the field, gave me the opportunity in the offensive line. Got to give it up to them. Couldn't get nowhere without them. Then, my tailback blocking so much, man. I really appreciate it. And give it up for the sideline crew. There's one at last year to start it all off. Now they're back at Fredwell Stadium, and Philip Andrew takes off like a tiger. And a few plays later, it's Brian Eyes will find the big man, Tavares Brown, with a nice easy catch to make it seven to nothing. Everyone's a little stunned, uh, except for of course Tucker Tiger fans expecting the big spoiler roll to come through for them tonight. Now Anthony Dabney's got other things in mind as this guy decided to go with his entire aerial attack until he got intercepted there by Mr. Matt McDaniel, but then things would get a little bit better, starting with this punt. Note to self, don't leave your arm while you're trying to fair catch a punt in traffic. And Hermitage gets the gift early. 
Daryl Jones will waste no time from six yards out. He'll get 74 yards on 18 carries on the night, and the game is tied, but it won't stay that way for long. Anthony Dabney with a dish to Tim Jean-Pierre. The Hermitage Panthers got 293 yards on the ground, and then Daryl will get his from five yards out, and uh, the route starts. Next one up, give it to Tim. Tim Jean-Pierre, this man is gone. Check out the move. He can go all the way for this one, and he will for the other touchdown. Now it's time for Eyes and Tavares Brown to do some magic and also get a little break because they needed it. The tip, Tavares Brown with the wherewithal to haul it in. He's waiting for basketball season to go play for Vance Harmon. That guy will create magic on the court. Back to football. Back to Anthony Dabney. And Anthony Dabney looking for Tim's brother, Jojean Pierre. And oh, that's an interception. Oh, but he got it back. Final score, 46 to 12. Tavares Brown, six catches, 131 yards, and two TDs in a losing effort. We take it now to Freeman's Long Stadium, where the Hermitage Panthers came cruising in, and the special teams with the extra effort. Freeman trying to get on the group, down seven to nothing, and the ball will get popped loose on this one, and Hermitage now continues with the roll. Anthony Dabney with a rollout. What a great senior year he's had. It's a shame these guys have to graduate. <laughs> They had a great skill position all the way up and down in the defensive and the offensive set. Makes this one 14 to nothing on his run. Then, again, Freeman trying to get settled in into a groove. Get this one picked off. 21 to nothing, all in the first quarter. Second quarter action, Anthony Dabney will find one of his favorites in the brothers, Joe Jean-Pierre. And Pardew will nail this one to make it 28 to nothing in the second quarter. Freeman, once again, trying to get it going. They give the ball back up, and no one's going to bring down the big man, Daryl Jones, and the scoring continues. Still second quarter action. Freeman doing a great job of getting all the way to midfield, and then the freshman mistake. Throwing the heavy coverage, kills on Pierre with the pick. And Anthony Daddy will, of course, spread the wealth and finds one of his all-time favorites in Fontel Mines as he hauls down this one in traffic. Great job by Fontel Mines. Division one prospect. Again, Freeman taking the midfield. This time forces the issue again, a little overthrown. And Joe Jean-Pierre is racing off. He's looking at six, but they save it. Four plays later, Fontel Mines in heavy coverage on his back. All right, I'm only showing this one. The second stringers, and they deserve a little love, too. The guy takes one for the team. What a great snag. Final score, 54 to nothing. What an outstanding year Herman has had. Last year, 2-8. This year, 7-2. Outstanding performance by a great team and great coaching staff.